Sophia and I are interviewing on behalf of KXSU 102.1 FM. Uh, so it's Seattle University Student Run Radio Station, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, I am the Director of Engagement for KXSU this year, and then Sophia. Yeah, I'm the Program Director of KXSU for this year. Great. Great to meet you. Uh, great to meet Great to see you too, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we were hoping just to conduct a little interview, ask some specifically like student questions, uh, just to, you know, get a feel and make sure to, you know, get your guys' uh, opinions. <laughs> Glad. We, we were looking forward to this, weren't we, Eduardo? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, awesome. Okay, well, um, we can just get right into it. I hope that's okay. Uh, so, first of all, one of the biggest things I know is that we're going from a having a Jesuit as our president to a lay person. Um, how do you see that transition working and do you see any differences that will continue into the future? Want me to start that one? Sure. Yeah. I noticed, by the way, in, in, a, in, a, uh, in an article in The Spectator about my legacy, they called you the, the, the first late president of the Seattle University. I, don't, I, saw, that. I saw that too. <laughs> I don't think they know what late means. So I don't know. They, they're going to think you're late for everything? I don't know. I'm very well, you know, we have, we've prepared a lot. We've prepared a lot for this uh, this time of transition to a, a president who's not a Jesuit. So we do a lot at Seattle University in terms of working with our faculty, with our boards and trustees, and various kinds of programs. But what is Jesuit education, and what is the Ignatian spirituality that undergirds what we are as a university? So we've been working at that for for many years. In fact, in my very first year as president, 1997. I told the board of trustees that I was quite sure that I was the last Jesuit president and that it would be good for us to prepare so that we're really ready for the time. I look forward to it as a positive thing because I really think that there's something that a person like Eduardo can bring to the leadership of the university that's a little bit different from a Jesuit. We've always had Jesuits. I'm the 21st of them. Always had Jesuits. We have a certain way of life and Eduardo has a family. He has children. He has a wife. He's got a different kind of a career or a different kind of a background. And he can bring all that to our Jesuit uh, university from his own uh, Catholic background and his own religious uh, faith commitment. So I've looked forward to that. And, and I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a very uh, positive kind of a development for, for the university and we're ready for it. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I mean, the Jesuit identity of the school is so deeply embedded in its, in, in its institutions and, and traditions, and that's not going to change, right? The, uh, what's distinctive about uh, Jesuit higher education is really, really deeply rooted. So I see, you know, the, obviously the, the change in the identity of the, the president is going to represent a shift, but not a fundamental kind of change in the, in the nature of the school. And, and, you know, I see my, one of my goals and responsibilities is to, is to um, uh, continue to, to authentically um, uh pursue that and, and kind of grow that that Jesuit identity and 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 to work with the Jesuits on campus to to uh, both better understand it myself and and then you know um, effectively communicate it and and um, and and bring it to bear on the, on the the life of the school and the decisions that I have to make now I do have a little bit of a silly question but my roommate wanted to know uh, as a layperson, where is your favorite place to lay down? <laughs> oh, um, well, that, well that's a, that is an interesting question. I, um, my favorite place to lay down, um, you know, I, so obviously I, I love laying down in my bed. I, I, I um, uh, but I, but I'm going to, that's too obvious. So I'm going to set that one to the side. My favorite place for like a, you know, to lay down when it's not like time to go to sleep is, uh, I'm a big sofa person. I love to lay on sofas. Um, we have a great, in our living room at home, we have a great, um, we have a great uh, uh, sofa in the living room where I can kind of just, if I need to reflect for a while, I, it's, it's long enough and kind of wide enough that I can just sort of stretch out and, uh, and contemplate the universe and it's very comfortable. And, and so I, I think outside of my bed, I'm a sofa lay, laying person. You know, you're going to have a lot of explaining to do, Eduardo, about what <laughs> we lay. 
No, I, I can just see it right now. Does it mean to be late? Does it mean to lie down a lot? Uh, you know, what does it mean? So, you know, we know about it's, not, it's not a common turnout here in Seattle about clerical and lay. So you better you better get a good little uh, uh, elevator speech on that one. I, work on I love it. it. <laughs> Who would you say is your favorite artist or band to, to each of you? Whoa, I have to go back so far because I'm just not uh, up to date on that sort of thing. I'm going to go back to uh, uh, the Stevie Wonder. So uh, you know, I'll tell you a story that I went to the Seattle Center to see the Supremes in a concert and the unknown warm-up group for the Supremes was a guy named Stevie Wonder. That dates me in terms of my era of being connected into music. So yeah, I love I, I love uh, Stevie Wonder or Peter Paul and Mary or you probably never have heard of these have you Sophia? I have yes. You have your grandparents. Yeah. Your grandparents know them I think. <laughs> How about you Eduardo? You know I so it depends on the genre. So I um, in in um, in uh, Latin music I am a big fan of Juan Luis Guerra uh, who's a Dominican. Um, uh, Merengue, kind of bachata, um, uh, an artist, tr just terrific. He's been around for a long time and continues to continues to produce really um, great music. But since I was in college, he's been, uh, and maybe even before that, he's been uh, one of my favorites. And then, uh, but I also I like um, uh, I like country music. I like uh, Eric Church, um, and um, and then uh, you know. When I was in high school, all my in the in kind of '80s music, my my favorite band was the Smiths, and they, they I know that they've made a comeback in recent years, so that that's very gratifying to me. Makes me feel ahead of my time. <laughs> Since you know everything's online right now, I was just really curious uh, myself about like how do you envision online education being incorporated into the future of SU? say a word on that you know I just think that we've learned so much and we've developed our capacity so much in regard to online and use of technology over the course of this year since March that we're probably twice as uh, empowered uh, for technological delivery of education and for communication and for administration and for meetings and for connections that I'm sure that is just going to play a larger role within Seattle University than it did in the past it really called us to up our game, our faculty developed how to do online courses, they revised their pedagogy. So I think it's gonna be incorporated a lot more into all courses as a part of our education. And then I believe that we'll, we'll, we'll move more, you know, I think the whole world in higher education will move more towards us, more courses or more degrees being delivered by way of uh, uh, online education. Uh, that's my sense. We've been more in the area of a few programs on the graduate level, but very little on the undergraduate level. So that may be a, an area of development. Yeah, I think the, the, the Jesuit, uh, in the United States especially, the Jesuit tradition in higher education has always uh, been committed to accessibility and, and all the, um, or actually many of the, the, the Jesuit law schools have, uh, have had evening programs for people who could you know, pursue their law degrees while they were working and uh, that kind of part-time education has, has been an important part, I think, of a lot of Jesuit universities. So online uh, modalities give you an opportunity to really extend that and, and reach students uh, where they are and, and uh, when they are, when they're able to access um, uh, the courses. And, and so it just provides so much greater reach and accessibility. And, and I think it's a really important tool. And, and this experience that we've all had the last uh, half a year with COVID has has definitely, I think, um, uh, familiarized us with with these tools, uh, you know, uh, much more than we were before, and that that's true for the students, but also for faculty and and administrators, and and so it's a great opportunity to to take advantage of this technology to to to, to be able to reach students, what you know, and provide a kind of lifelong learning experience um, for for people who are engaging with higher education while they're also um, you know working and. And, 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 and moving on with other parts of their lives. I, I, I do think the residential experience, one, one thing that I feel like I've, uh, uh, I never doubted it, but, it, but it's been reinforced for me uh, these past few months is how important the face-to-face -face residential experience is. It's really irreplaceable. This is 
wonderful. It's great to be able to, to have this conversation across the country using Zoom. Um, but that experience of engaging with people in in the in the moment in the room and and, um, and the kind of interactions that you can have in person are 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 essential as well. So it's an important part of the the toolkit. Looking forward, I think it's it's really an, uh, uh, something that is is never going away and is going to expand. But but also at the same time, it, it can't replace the the residential in person experience. What will you remember most about your time of being president at Seattle U? I think what I'm going to remember most is I, I have this pattern. You probably know it if you've seen me on campus. It's because I wear a priest outfit, I'm, I'm quite recognizable to students. And I can easily say hello to every student that I want to. They don't feel like it's a, who's this person? And why is this person saying hello? And so I've just really enjoyed, because I live here on campus, whenever I'm walking from where I live to the office or going across campus to a meeting, to say hello to as many students as I can, to ask a little question uh, about those students, just to connect that way. And that's a, it's a wonderful thing because, as you know, when you're in our kind of job of being president of the university, a lot of it has to do with business and administration and finances and, you know, helping to develop consensus and articulating things. And you got to have contact with the students. And so I just think I'll miss most just that flow of engagement with the students. I think I notice that so much right now because. I walk across campus to go where I'm living right now, which is a block off campus, and I'll see, you know, six construction workers and six people walking their dogs and no students. And I really feel the lack of it. And so it's kind of tipping me off a little bit that that's what I'm going to uh, most miss or what I'm going to lack is just that engagement with, uh, with college students that I've, that I've so enjoyed uh, over these years. And, you know, another thing is I'm very much a person I've loved uh, working together with a cabinet, the people who are vice presidents and provosts of the university, very, very close to them. And I'm already beginning to feel that uh, there's more to it than simply a good working group. There's a kind of a uh, relationship that we have among ourselves as colleagues that is just really wonderful. And I'm beginning to feel that I'm going to miss that too. And I can go back and think of who's been on that cabinet all these 24 years and, you know, the people that were on it when I came, I, you know, I know exactly who they were and what they were like. And and, and I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss that too. So those I guess it's the people then, huh? But particularly the students that I'll that I'll uh, that I'll miss uh, in terms of what my life. Or engaging with students. Oh well, gosh, you, I don't know how you do it, but you have to you have to kind of combine. You are the president, so you don't step out of being president. But you have to show people that you're you're just another person also, and therefore you're accessible. So so that I mean I don't think that's easy to do. I mean you could be a president, you could be kind of like well we wouldn't dare talk to him or so forth, and that you know because that's a but you you have to show that you're 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 a person like that. And I think that just comes from from just engagement and communication conversation. I did find it where I was interesting this last year. Gosh, I guess it was. Well, it was a full year ago. Uh, the students found because of some issues that had come up that they didn't see enough of me or they didn't have enough access to me. So I opened up a, an hour on a Friday afternoon each month uh, where any student could come and they didn't need to get an appointment. They could just come because I thought it was kind of like a barrier if you have to call up and make an appointment and so forth. That That's not, so they could just come. And so I had students coming in and I'd have like nine of them in the course of an hour and sometimes be a couple of them together and something one after another and just little conversations with that. And so that, that helped a little bit, having some kind of open hour for students. Some presidents find it by just going and being where the students are. Now, I'm a person, because I'm introverted, I like to get a little private time in the middle of the day. So I don't see myself going and sitting in the student center in the, in the uh, Cherry Street, you know, and, and having lunch with the students. That's not me. I, I like to get away for a little bit of kind of a pause in the middle of the day. But that would be a great way to get to know a student. Some people said that I should <laughs> that I should go and sit on the second floor of the student center. You know, when you come up at the top of the stairs and there's that desk there, and I should. Whereas I'm Father Steve, the president, say hello. You know, and you're gonna just kind of like I could just kind of connect with students that way. Uh, and then I the other thing is, is I will bet you that over 24 years, I've never turned down an, an invitation that has personally come to me from students to participate in something. If I just get a flyer about such and such an events going on, I probably won't come. But if a student reaches out to me and says, we've got this club going on, would you come and be president and say a few words? I'll go. 
or we have this event and it would mean a lot to us if you were to come, I'll, I'll go. So I don't turn down invitations from students and that kind of gets around a little bit so that people feel like they can in, in, invite. So that's a, that's a, that's a good way to, to do it is just to, just to respond to what, what students uh, invite you to. What uh, drew you to SU in the first place? You know, so many different things. Uh, the, um, I, I, I am really inspired by its values. Um, I, I think that when I, uh, you know, it, the, this combination of an identity that is Catholic and progressive is absolutely unique and something that I find really engaging and, and, and challenging. Um, and, and so that, that's a, a, a huge part of the attraction for me, the, the opportunity to work with undergraduates, which is something that, um, you know, my undergraduate education was a deformative part of my own life. And, 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 um, and I love working with law students and I love law school, but I, but I really eager to, to get more involved with undergraduate education. Um, the, obviously the, to come back to the region where I grew up and where my family is all uh, still living is really exciting to me. And, um, uh, and, and to kind of engage with these, some of these, I, the concerns and challenges that you alluded to earlier are, are you know, is, is a, is to me, an exciting and, and important um, opportunity. So it was it, it, the, you know, the announcement came at just the right time for me in my, in my life. And um, at a time when I could move and when my, when my family could move um, and, 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 you know, kind of all those things together really made it something that I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't uh, pass up. Sure, yeah. just to tell you a bit. So we've, uh, we've reserved the spaces for commencements on the, the, both the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday of that after the end of the exams in June. So we reserve spaces at the uh, ben, uh, Maidenbauer Center in Bellevue and the Ben Arroyo uh, Center in downtown Seattle. And what we're looking to do this year is to have, uh, we're gonna have one commencement that'll be for the class of 2020, because we promised them that we would offer an in-person commencement. And so we're gonna seek to have that for them and that would be a special separate one for them. And then we're going to do some that'll be like, there might be one that'll be completely for the College of Arts and Sciences, since it's such a large college, and it'll be the commencement for them. And then we'll have one for graduate students or a couple of schools with graduate students. I think we're looking at having as many as six different commencements spread over the, the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, after the end of that exam week at uh, two different locations. And that allows us to have it in Seattle, and to, there wasn't other large venues like, you know, like the key arena is not going to be available yet. It's still being under construction for hockey and so forth. And we would have needed to go to the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma. And we thought that would be difficult to do. No offense to a person from the Tacoma area, but that, that's not a popular thing, Eduardo. You better learn that early about hey, I, traveling, traveling. <laughs> Tacoma Dome is not, is not, is not like, oh boy, whoop, looking forward to that. So that those are some of that, but boy, you know, that announcement today about the uh, vaccine that's 90% effective, if that can come through and if that can be widely distributed by, you know, May, June, it'll make a very big difference about what we can do with commencements. But we're planning for them and we've, we've reserved the spaces. Oh gosh, yes, they're great. I had a meeting this morning with the, uh, with the two people, Laura Brannigan and Randley Starr, who are the people that we meet with, Dr. Shane Martin and I meet with them, I think every three or four weeks to go over the, how the building's coming along, what issues need to be dealt with in regard to different departments or aspects of the school. It's really coming along well. It's so exciting to see what it's like and how it's coming together. It's on time. Uh, they're now saying the completion date is May the 26th is the day that the, the contractor's uh, contract will end. We'll then have the move in of, uh, over the course of the summer. Uh, we're very interested in, you know, uh, you know, doing as much work as we possibly can over the course of the summer so that we can complete the work in the Bannon Science and Bannon Engineering buildings so that they'll be ready also. It's more likely that they're going to be ready more like after the first quarter rather than completely at just at the start of the quarter. Um, boy, for me, I don't know, you know, there's a lot of buildings that have been built during my time. And for some reason, this Center for Science Innovation has been 
I've had so much more interest in it than I've had in any other building. And I, I don't know why, if maybe it's uh, because of the dimensions of it, its prominence, uh, the work that's gone in to raise the funds for it, uh, kind of the promise of the future in regard to people majoring in science, engineering, computer science, health sciences. It's such an important foundation for the future of CLU that has been very, 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 very vital and very, very interesting to, to see to see it uh, develop. Big news on that, I don't know if the students know this, is that it's gonna be called the Senegal Center. So it's gonna be named for Jim and Jan Senegal. Jim Senegal is the, was the co-founder of Costco. He also was the chair of the board of Seattle University and was the chair of our campaign. He's the person that got us into the Seattle University Youth Initiative. And so uh, they've agreed that they will allow us to name that building for him. So it'll be called the Jim and Jan Senegal. That's S-I-N-E-G-A-L, Senegal Center. So I think, I tell Jim and Jan, you can put all your names in front of it, but the students will say, I'll meet you at Senegal. They won't even say Senegal Center, they'll just say Senegal, you know? So uh, anyhow, his name will be here. And that's, uh, we're excited about that too. Wow, that's great. I, I agree though. I'm sure a lot of students would only say Senegal. Uh, I know KXSU is also excited to see our new addition in that building. So. Oh, yes. No, that's, we're excited. We put it right over the entrance on 12th Avenue. So there's the entrance on 12th and to the left is the Center for Community Engagement and the Youth Initiative and one floor up on the second floor. That's KXSU. So you're going to have a view out over 12th Avenue and everybody's going by on 12th or coming into that building from the street. will see KXSU right up there. So you'll, right now, tell Eduardo where you are now. Oh, we're in the basement of Campion. We just have a little studio down there. <laughs> So definitely different, yeah. <laughs> definitely a step up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we definitely have found like our little place in uh, having our basement kind of studio, but it'll definitely be a, you know, a, like you said, a step up. <laughs> well, when you, what'll happen is when, you know, you come back for reunion in 10 years and you meet with the students who have been, you know, in that, in that, um, in that new, in those new digs, you'll kind of wax nostalgic for the good old days in the basement and um, you'll, you'll, you'll get together and share stories about it and tell them that this, you know, it was way better than the, uh, than this, uh, you know, naturally lit uh, uh, fancy. <laughs> yes, exactly. 